It's finally happening, guys. Intel prices are gonna be falling faster than... Well, they're gonna be falling. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. Ryzen 7 is a great value proposition for anybody that needs a lot of cores and threads for heavily multi-threaded workloads. Now, up until Ryzen launched, the only processors that were available to consumers that needed lots of cores and lots of threads fell on the Intel side of thing. And primarily, if we're talking about the real high end, we're talking about those eight core and 16 thread processors, like the 6900K, which retails over $1,000, or the 6950X, which retails at $1,650 on Newegg. Now, those are outrageously high prices, but with no competition in the marketplace, hey, Intel can really charge whatever they want. Now that we have the Ryzen 7 lineup, which at the bottom end of that is the 1700, which I would argue is the one that most people should go for because you can overclock it and then you still have eight cores and 16 threads running at or near 4.0 gigahertz for less than $350 compared to a $1,000 processor in the 6900K or a $1,650 processor in the uh, Intel uh, i7-6950X. Now, no, the Ryzen processors will not top Intel's processors in everything, and pro possibly even not in most things, uh, core for core and clock for clock. However, they don't need to. At less than $350, a 1700 is super cheap compared to a $1,000 processor, and that's something that Intel is starting to get at least a little bit wise to. So according to PC World, and by the way, the link to the article will be in the description down below, on Thursday in an earnings call, the CEO of Intel sort of mentioned that the prices of Intel processors may start to fall at least a little bit at the high end of things. Now, we still don't have details on how much the processors will fall in price, but hopefully Ryzen 7 processors get enough traction to really push Intel to drop the prices more than just like $100 or $200. Now, to be clear, Intel's processors are not apples to apples with the Ryzen processors, even when you're talking about the R7 processors versus the higher uh, core and thread count processors like the 6900K or 6950X. And by that I mean some people require Intel technologies that are not available to Ryzen processors. Things like Thunderbolt are just not available on the Ryzen platform, whereas some content creators or some people require that connection for their workflow. And those people will be pushed into making a little bit of a difficult choice. You can either abandon those technologies in favor of a slower interface like USB 3.1 and go for the Ryzen side of things, or you can stick with it and pay a much higher premium for those processors and for those platforms. And that call will have to be made on an individual basis. But for the vast majority of people, people like myself or other people that use a lot of multi-threaded uh, workloads, but don't necessarily use a lot of the proprietary technologies that are only available on the Intel side of thing, the Ryzen 7 processors are gonna give us something we haven't had in the marketplace, at least on the CPU side of things, for a long time we're gonna be getting a legitimate choice between Intel and AMD, and as always when there's competition in the marketplace, you and me, the consumers, well, we win. And as always guys, if you like this content, give me a like, share, subscribe, all those things down below. Comment and tell me whether you're still looking at Ryzen or if those lower Intel prices that we may be seeing in the future will entice you to buy Intel over the AMD uh, Ryzen platform. You can also follow me on social media at Hoosier Hardware on both Instagram and on Twitter. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware and I'll see you guys in the next video.